Four Lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you. I'm your Wednesday night host here at Body Bags. It is week 307. We've just been a couple minutes here talking about Joe D'Amato's 1981 effort, Absurd. And uh, he is uh, not only directs, but he is the cinematographer. And it is a collaborative effort between him and George Eastman, who will write the story and also serve as our chief antagonist of the film, Miko Stinopoulos. And uh, the composer, uh, Cardio, Carlo Cardio, uh, also, uh, you know, things like uh, Zombie 5, Killing Birds, uh, Witchery, Pieces, a uh, number of other films. Uh, he will bring uh, the score, which is uh, the music really serves to heighten some of the, uh, some of Joe's expression here in this film, uh, violent expression. Of course, uh, George Eastman again heads the cast. Annie Bell, who plays Emily, our babysitter, and Kataya. Berger is uh, Katia, uh, our main protagonist, I guess you, you could, um, by the end of the film. And uh, Charles Barmont is uh, our uh, police, our sergeant, who is uh, called on to the scene of a murder. And he will join uh, the Greek Orthodox priest, played by Edmund Purdom, who is uh, sort of the Loomis character, right? This is, uh, this movie, um, well, here's... Uh, Here's my 88 Films release uh, of it, uh, the famous Battle Axe cover art. Uh, this movie gets, uh, you can kind of just see on the screen behind me uh, some of the extras and uh, what, but uh, you know, this, uh, you know, some of the negative comes, you know, it's a it's a cheap ripoff of, an Italian cheap ripoff of Halloween. And yeah, I mean, there's, a, it shares a lot with Halloween. But the movie, you know, sort of brings its own expression to the table. Um, you know, and some, uh, you know, Basically, what you have here, Halloween narrative aside, uh, you have um, as backdrop, you, you've got this laboratory somewhere deep in the Aegean Sea uh, where this guy, Mikos, has been, uh, he's been sort of experimented on, and so he's the byproduct of this. And, and part of the, the issue here is uh, he has a sort of healing regenerative issue where he, his blood coagulates really quick like, and so he basically becomes an unstoppable force of nature, so to speak, and so he's sort of our, you know, a la Michael Myers, I guess, but more of a, well, I would say an earthly, more, more earthly vibe to him. I mean, yeah, we see him. There's no mask. There's nothing like that. He has just sort of gone insane from these experiments. The priest is on his trail. Uh, you know, really, aside from that, um, we're we're not given a whole lot of the backdrop here, and so uh, you know, he'll. Eventually, we're introduced to these two main characters, meaning Mikos and the priest. And early on in the film, the, the chase will end with Mikos being somewhat impaled on top of a, of a iron fence, um, you know, on this property. And uh, he'll be taken to the hospital. And as they're working to save his life, um, his self-healing power kicks in as well, which, you know, is just freaking people out. Um, but he will return to the very home that he's ultimately impaled on this fence trying to get away from the priest. Uh, he will find his way back to this home in a weird way that really ultimately is the dad's fault. And that's where this movie sort of, it, it brings its own little sort of uh, added, uh, I guess, um, things that you know that that does set it off i mean uh the main the main thing that will bring him to this home in which he will terrorize uh two kids and a babysitter the parents have left the home will leave the home to go watch the super bowl with some friends and uh, by the time miko shows up uh you know emily the babysitter hasn't showed up yet peggy who is the nurse to uh, katia who is, uh, because of accident, been immobilized in her bed, and we're never really given the extent of her injury. It's spine-related, probably, and uh, all we know is she is about as immobilized as, as she can, strapped in and whatnot. But we're never really given detail in terms of how bad her injury is. Like, if you took all the straps off, could she just, you know, struggle to get up and walk or not? So, um, you know, that plays in, you know, of course, into the end of this film, but... Um, 
you know, when you know the parents will head out to a friend's house down the road. Uh, Peggy's, you know, hanging out there. Emily is late for whatever reason. And uh, but what you have earlier in the evening, post Miko's having escaped the hospital after having killed a nurse, uh, is you have this pivotal scene. I think it might be a real pivotal scene where he's sort of, you know, walking along the roadway. These bikers come by. And, uh, of course, one of them, Michele Sauvé, uh, his bike will conk out and, you know, and uh, before uh, our killer uh, can walk across the road and kill him, uh, the dad of this family in question, uh, out on an errand or something, and he just comes flying down the road, side swipes Miko's, knocking him off, but it's a hit and run. He just takes off down the road. And so, you know, Miko's will revive and uh, he will, you know, take out our young Michele Sauvé and uh, choke him to death and uh, he'll just start wandering you know the direction from where the car came so eventually he will end up at this guy's residence this the father in question who now is burdened with the fact that he just committed a hit and run but it acts as like this sort of fate you know this device this vehicle this idea that no pun intended this idea that by him hitting this killer and allowing it to be a hit and run, he has almost invited this killer to come into his home and terrorize his children while he's not there. And that is exactly what will happen. Now this film brings with it certain set pieces or, or, or the death sequences are very prolonged, very drawn out between the music and just the, the act of violence itself that's perpetrated on these people by Mikos. Uh, is uh, man, it's tough, man. There's a bandsaw scene where he puts this guy's head through a bandsaw. It is, it is rough. I mean, it is rough to watch. Maybe I don't know. Maybe the worst is when the poor girl, uh, he'll put the babysitter, try to shove her into an oven in the house and uh, and turn it on. And that whole sequence is just man. Um, it's just very drawn out. Very. It's almost in a Fulcian way. It's almost kind of like that. You no. Know, you're gonna watch, and the only way you can't watch is if you just turn away or get up and turn the TV off or whatever. But the scene is is you know it, it almost demands that it holds your attention through. And you know by the time Nikos gets into the house and starts to terrorize, uh, you know the the house they shoot it in is just I mean it's so huge, and I mean you could have got lost in there shooting this film. And uh, so I mean you know there's. Uh, D'Amato's really, as a cinematographer, he just knows where the camera ought to be. And he's able, between his work with the camera and the music uh, and, the, and the actors, he's able to develop a heightened sense of tension that is just drawn out to the nth degree. And uh, it, it does, you know, you do feel a little tired watching this film when this film finally comes to its incredibly, absolutely unbelievable ending um it's almost kind of like all i'll say is they almost kind of like they almost took the end of halloween the original 78 halloween and they flip it on its head uh except for the finale of this film and so yeah i'm sure there's there's homages paid for uh, to halloween this is an italian view of it but damato brings his own stuff to this movie in a way that just oh man it just it makes it worth checking out and watching or if it's been a while to revisit and it is too bad we never got that third piece not that it had to be a similar story but like Anthropophagus it could have been tucked in and served as a sort of way of hey this is a unique this is D'Amato's trilogy right um, outside my doorbell I think that's my Lucio Fulci film outside I'm supposed to get the psychic today how cool is that but anyways uh, you know D'Amato just brings I mean in his own way it's not Carpenter's Halloween, but in his own way, he, I think he answers, hey, this is the Italian uh, sort of view of a uh, story like this. Um, I know I got missed off track a little bit, but that trilogy, it, it's too bad D'Amato couldn't have brought his own sort of Three Mothers or a Gates of Hell trilogy, all where the centerpiece would have been George Eastman. And maybe as a backdrop, this laboratory somewhere hidden in the Aegean, 
uh, where they're doing things they ought not to be doing could have been sort of, I don't know, some, there's something there or could have been there, and it's too bad. All we got is these two films. And uh, so anyways, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say other than, uh, uh, you know, the contrast between Peggy, uh, who sits there and waits uh, for Emily to show up, the, the contrast between those two could not be any different. Peggy is sort of like uh, the bad babysitter fill in. Emily is the good one, but yet Peggy gets the easy way out with her death sequence and Emily gets the long drawn out, which I don't know, kind of doesn't make sense to me. Should have been reversed because Peggy uh, should have really had it coming, but uh, her death sequence actually is a nice homage to um, stage fright with a uh, pickaxe. Anyways, so yeah, absurd. Joe D'Amato and George Eastman working together and uh, quite an uh, interesting uh, uh, stalk and terrorize in someone's home film with some, you know, twists in there, especially the end. The end is absolutely killer. Um, nothing like it. It's absolutely unreal. So, uh, anyways, yeah, I think I'm just going to stop there and uh, just, yeah, check it out. So, week 307, Joe D'Amato, absurd, his follow up to Anthropophagus, and yes, here at Wednesday nights, we love Italian cinema to the max. and. Uh, Keep checking out Body Bags each and every day. A new video comes out. And man, everyone just does such an awesome job on this channel. And uh, it's just great things happening here at Body Bags. So anyways, we always end these things off with Go Bills.